this is Christy Felk with Create with Christy. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I'm here to show you a fancy fold card today. I'm featuring the Flowering Foils Designer Series paper. This is part of uh, Celebration, and this is called an Overlay Card. Isn't that pretty? I love being able to do different folds. It just makes the card extra special. So let's get started. Okay, first off, I'm going to show you all the supplies that you need. I want you to be able to gather them up in case you want to make the card with me. You need a piece of Rococo Rose cardstock. This is a five and a quarter by five and a half inch piece. And you need another Rococo Rose piece. This one is four inches by four inches. You need a Whisper White piece. This is three inches by three and three quarter inches. And one more Whisper White piece, and this is a five and a quarter by four inch piece. And you're also gonna need some ribbon. This is the Whisper White Polka Dot Tool Ribbon. Isn't that pretty? I love this ribbon. And this is a 32 inch piece. We're gonna be wrapping around the card and tying a bow. That's why you need some extra. And you're gonna need the Flowering Foils Designer Series Paper. Isn't this gorgeous? I wanna show you all the sheets real quick. It comes, um, they're 12 by 12. There are four different designs in the pack and you get three of each design. So that's 12 sheets of paper, but it's got uh, gold and, I mean, not gold, it's got rose gold, even better than gold. <laughs> it's got rose gold foil and sil silver foil. So that's what this one has. This has both colors on it. This one has both colors on it. Isn't that pretty? We're gonna be using this one in today's card. We're also using this one in today's card. Now this one's just got the silver and this one has just got the rose gold. And if you stay till the end of the video, I'll be showing a card that I made using this design paper. But you can get this paper now until March 31st, or while supplies last, whichever comes first. If you place a $50 order before shipping and tax, you can pick this as your free celebration item. Like I said, it's while supplies last, this could sell out before the end of the month. But March 31st is the absolute last day, if it does make it till the end. Okay, and the other things that you need, you need a crumb cake ink pad, Rococo Rose ink pad and a Mossy Meadow ink pad. You need sponge daubers, snail and dimensionals, and I am using a stamp set. This one is the Strong and Beautiful stamp set. This is in the annual catalog, and it's a really good set. It's got a lot of, it's got a Happy Mother's Day, which is coming up very soon. A lot of neat things, but I'll be using this. I cherish you, my true friend. I know I can always count on you. That's a stamp I'll be using today. Okay, now we'll take a little break. You can pause the video if you're wanting to make this card with me and go get your supplies together. And I'll be, I'll be waiting here wait for you and you can just start the video again when you come back. Okay, you do need what I forgot to tell you is your paper cutter. So you might wanna pause your video again. I forgot to say that, but with, I'm grabbing my paper cutter. Our paper cutter has a score and a cutting blade. We're not using the cutting blade right now. So I'm gonna put that here at the bottom so I don't use it by accident. I'm gonna bring my larger Rococo rose piece, the five and a quarter by five and a half. Now I wanna make sure that the five and a quarter inch side is along the top. So I'm gonna line this up and it is. I wanna make sure, I, it's real hard to tell sometimes, I definitely want the five and a quarter across the top. So now I'm gonna close this. I am going to line this uh, right side up with the one inch mark in the cutter. So once that's lined up, I'm gonna take my scoring tool and go up and down. And I'm gonna do it a few times because I wanna get a nice good crease. And there now we've got our crease and it's all ready to go. Now we're done with the cutter. Now if you have the Simply Scoring tool too, you can also use that of course, and just make sure the five and a quarter is along the top and you score it one inch. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and take this. And I wanna tell you one little tip you may not know. When you score, of course you've got the valley that you just made, but when you turn it over, you've got like a mountain, that's what we call it. The mountain is actually the one that goes inside the fold. I know that seems a little backwards. It will work either way, but it folds a lot better if the, um, the mountain is inside the fold. So that's ready to go. Now I'm gonna bring in my four inch by four inch piece of Rococo Rose. I'm gonna bring in some snail. And I'm gonna put some snail right across the top and I'm just gonna do two strips. I don't wanna go any farther than that and the strips are gonna be right next to each other. I think you can see that in the video but I don't wanna go any farther because I don't want any glue sticking up underneath this flap. 
and you do want to put it on this uh, card, this piece of cardstock, and not on this flap here, because you get it some hanging closer to the uh, fold here. Or if you go too far over here, this is going to glue shut, and you don't want that to happen. So it works a lot better if you put it on here. Now we're going to take this, center it. Go ahead and open that flap up so you can see a little better. You're going to center it left and right, so you want these two borders here to be about the same width. And you also want to line up the bottom edge of this piece with the bottom edge of the card base. Very important to get that lined up down there because that's how the card's going to come together a lot easier. So I think I need to move that to the left just a little bit. I think that's pretty good. Okay, now that we've got it in place and you just bring this down, there we go, just like so. And now you've got the card base made. Isn't that cool? And there's no glue hanging over the edge since I just did those two strips. Okay, now we're going to bring in a piece, the three and three quarter, I mean, so yeah, three and three quarter by three inch piece Whisper White. Forgot the size there for a second. Going to get your Mossy Meadow ink pad. And I'm going to take my stamp, ink it up, and that looks pretty good. I'm going to stamp it here in the upper right corner. Hold it down for a few seconds so the ink has a chance to soak in. That's ready to go. And now I'm going to take, bring in this again, bring in my snail. I'm going to um, attach this to this uh, piece right here. And it should center within that piece that's showing here at the bottom. See how that fits in very nicely. So you've got a nice border all the way around it. And now we're going to put this over to the side for right now. Now we're going to do something with this flower. I went ahead and loosely cut this out ahead of time. You saw that piece where it had all those flowers I showed at the beginning. So I just wanted to pick out one of the singles. And the couple of singles are a little different, but that's okay. Any of the single flowers will work. And now we're going to go ahead and do some um, sponge daubing on it. I'm going to bring in a scrap piece of paper here. And I'm going to start off with the crumb cake. I'm going to make this little center right here crumb cake. So open up that ink pad, and I want to um, lightly put um, ink right there in that middle. I'm going very lightly. Now with this color, I don't need to do this. When we get to the mossy meadow, when it's a dark color, I'm going to mark it off here a little bit, take a little bit of the ink off on my scrap paper. That way it doesn't get too dark on me, because you can always go from light to dark. If it's dark right from the beginning, you can't take the ink away. So now I've got that center already. Bring in my Rococo Rose for the flowers and the little buds that are on there. And once again, I'm going to go lightly. I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit off just to be on the safe side. And that looks pretty good. If it doesn't look too dark, then you're good. And I'm just going to lightly go around, start with the center, and just keep adding ink until it looks good to me. And now for the rest of it, I'm just going to lightly go. So it's kind of like a gradual, it's going to be dark in the middle and lighter on the um, edges. And you don't have to go all the way to the end. If you want some of the uh, white to show on the ends, you can definitely do that too. But it's a really neat effect. I really like that a lot. And now, and I think I'm gonna take a little bit off again since I added some ink. I'm gonna make this a little darker here in the middle. There, that looks pretty good. Now, I'm gonna do these little buds here. Now you are gonna go outside the lines a little bit and that is okay, because we're gonna be fussy cutting this out in a minute. And you'll see how even if you do see a little bit of it on the edges, it still looks really good. And we've got a little bud here. Just kind of try to go on the edge, because you can see how I'm angling the sponge dauber a little bit. That way it makes it a little smaller for you. That needs a little more up here. So there, I've got, well, those look kind of dark, I mean light. So I'm going to add a little more. Like I said, you always can add more, you just can't take it away. Add a little bit more there. That looks really good. Okay, now we're going to do the mossy meadow. On this one, you definitely want to practice on your scrap piece first. So open this up. Get a little ink. And see how dark that is first off. So I'm going to kind of take a little bit of the ink off. And then still very lightly, start from the bottom of the leaf and go out. Because you want the bottom to be a little darker and the ends to be a little lighter, okay? If you get too much of lines, then you can kind of pounce on it a little bit to get rid of that. Like I said, this mossy meadow, you're not even going to have to re-ink it again. This one, use the lightest touch possible. 
like on my first one, I still wish I wasn't quite as dark, but that's okay, it still looks good. Then I'm gonna go on the side and get these little leaves here. I'm kind of working at an angle, so I think I'm missing it just a little bit, but that's all right. Like I said, we're gonna be cutting around that. Oh, and we've got one more leaf right here. Start the bottom and come out. So isn't that pretty? I really like that a lot. Now what I'm gonna do is bring in a, a paper towel or Kleenex will work too. And sometimes the ink might pool a little bit on the foil. So just kind of wipe it a little bit and get any ink that might be on that foil off. So that way it shines up really nice. Okay, now I'm gonna fussy cut this out and I wanna show, tell you a couple tricks. When you fussy cut, don't move your scissors that much. What you're gonna be moving is the paper and that helps you get nice smooth curves when you uh, cut around it. If you move the scissors, that's when you get those sharp edges and it just doesn't look as good. So I'm gonna start here and cut and just watch how I'm moving the paper around that leaf. Now you will move the scissors a little bit, but just not much. Most of it, I am moving the paper around. And you just keep doing that until you've got it all cut out. Okay, it's all cut out. Get these little scraps out of the way. Isn't that pretty? And see, there is a little bit of sponging outside those lines, but it looks just fine. I think it gives it a neat look. So that's all ready to go and bring this out of the way. I'm gonna put some Stampin' Dimensionals on the back of this. I think four will do pretty good. Looks like I've used all my pieces, big pieces, so I'll cut one off here and use that one. That looks pretty good. Bring in my card base. Now, I, no matter what flower you use, make sure you stamp the greeting first. That makes it so you know where you can put your um, flower. And I have learned something pretty cool. You can take these off real easy with your fingers, but if you, but then you end up having pieces all over the place. If you take it off of here with your paper piercer, then you can go and pick up more, and it, you get all of them put together, which is pretty cool. So when you put this down, make sure that the leaves are not hanging off the bottom of the card, but it is okay if they hang over this. You just want, want to stay within the actual car, the out, outer limits of the card, let's say. So that looks good. And I actually like it hanging over a little bit. So there, we've got that ready to go. Now we're gonna do the inside. Now you could just take this whisper white piece, the five and a quarter by four, put that in there for your inside and call it a day and just have white there. But I thought that looked kind of bland. So I took that silver design paper that's in the flowering foils. These are the one inch by four inch pieces. And we're gonna put one on each end. I knew that one inch was a little wider than this border right here. So that's how I figured out my size. And I think it's a lot easier to line, when you wanna line something right along the edge to have the edge you're lining up be closest to you. And I'm gonna take my, my left end. If you're right-handed, this is the way you wanna go if you're, uh, I'm sorry, right-handed, you wanna go this way. Left-handed, you go the other way. But I'm gonna start on the left, make sure my corners are together. I've still got this lifted up, and then I slowly put it down, angling it when I need to to make sure it goes right along that white edge. There we go. Do the same with this side. Put a little snail on it. Line up that corner again, like so, and put it down. There we go. So that's ready to go. We'll go ahead and stick this on the uh, inside of the card. And just center it perfectly. Doesn't have to be perfect to say perfectly. <laughs> you just centered it close enough. It's good to eyeball it. Put that down. Isn't that prettier with that designer paper there? I, just, I really like that a lot. Okay, now we're gonna bring in the ribbon. Here's a trick I've learned when you're using a big piece of ribbon and you want your bow to be on a certain side. I want it to be on the left side here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna fold this in half, like so, make sure that the top and the bottom are straight. They're not twist, none of the strands are twisted. That looks pretty good. You're gonna open, open your loop up and thread it across here. Then it's gonna be right where you want it to be. That's gonna make your ends be even over here. 
and you know you've got enough ribbon on each end to make your bow. So I'm gonna grab this uh, top one and take that one from the bottom and make a single knot. And now once you start making that single knot, you can tell this is still straight. Sometimes this might twist. So you just play around with it. And then when both look pretty good, now it is gonna bunch up here in the middle, but that's okay, because your bow's gonna cover that up. As long as this is straight, flat, and this is flat, you're good. Make your strips perpendicular, so they're up and down. Take your bottom one and make a loop. Tighten it a little bit again, and then wrap it around. And like you learned when you were little, put, the, put it through the hole like a rabbit. <laughs> and there you go, you've got your bow, and then you can play around with it. Sometimes make it a little smaller than you want it, then you can tighten it up again, and, and it'll get a little bigger. So that looks pretty good, I think I'm happy with that. Now I'm gonna take my scissors and cut the ends at an angle. I, you can tell that I made it a lot longer than it needed to be, but that helped with me being able to make uh, the ends uh, even, have enough ribbon for both sides of my bow. And then you can play around and make sure that this is wrapped in the, and that looks pretty good. Sometimes this might start slipping off, so you can just kind of push it up again and get it all back in place. So there is the Flowering Foils Overlay card. Hope you had fun uh, making that. And um, if you want to find the dimensions, I've got a link to my blog post where I've got all that listed plus the supply list. So just make sure you click on that. If you do not have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and don't have any Stampin' Up! catalogs and you live in the United States, I would love to be your demonstrator. Here's our annual catalog, our mini catalog, spring catalog, and then our two celebration brochures. I will mail these out to you. Just click the contact me link below and I'll get these mailed out to you, but only if you don't have a demonstrator of your own. And if you wanna follow me on Pinterest, Instagram, and my Facebook page, you can do so just by clicking the links below. And if you don't wanna miss any more videos, make sure that you click the subscribe button in the lower corner, right corner. And then when you click that, you'll see a little bell. Make sure you click on that because that will make it so YouTube notifies you. And I almost forgot, I was gonna show you the other card I made. So let's bring this one back in. This was with that flower print. This is one I made in a live a couple weeks ago. As you can see, I did like a little ombre, or ombre, I'm never sure how to say that. Started with a darker a rose color. This is actually Mary Merlot, and then got lighter and lighter and lighter with Rococo Rose and uh, Petal Pink. Just realized I used Rococo Rose again. I'm gonna have to make sure I use a different color with my next card with this foil paper. But if you wanna learn how to make this card, just click on the video up at the top right corner. And I will also have, if you don't see that, because if you're watching this on TV, I notice that those don't pop up, then just look down in the description. There'll be a link to that video below too. So I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I plan to be doing a lot more videos, especially since everyone is home and needs something to do. I thought this would be a way that um, keep you from getting too bored and you can get some uh, project ideas. And I just hope you all take care of yourselves, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Praying for you. Bye.